want that green, I call the outside living room. And if you think about the growth and you look at whether uh, garden catalogs for, uh, people put more and more emphasis with conversation, fire pits out in the backyard, but people need that outside living room for recreation, sports. And while lawns don't need to be the entire part of that subdivision, they are significant and we need to be recognizing that. So there's a lot of education about what is the right balance, but it still has, more than a study, has a very functional place in our society and our environment. We need to recognize that. And I think that is being thrown out. Preferably the baby with the bathwater. People forgetting that lawns have a benefit for society as well as the environment. The lawn care operators have a growing awareness to the need. We're seeing more and more of that in our educational programs and professional meetings. They're starving actually for more work from the extension service about how to convey that. And I think we need more of the work like what's going on at the University of New Hampshire in terms of how they can do things differently and how do we communicate to the public some benefits of you know, maybe a little bit less long, a little redirected. But the reality is they're not going to spend $1,200 to undo a lawn variety of grass and they're not going to spend the two to $3,000 to totally redo their landscape because we suggest they should have a buffer strip between the sidewalk and the, their grass area. But I do believe and we've seen the work by a lot of different institutions, uh, universities, that lawns in their care can be made responsible and do serve an environmental benefit. And I know uh, Jim Beard has done a lot of work on that. Um, and water balance in the future in terms of what goes in the landscape, because lawns do provide a tremendous cooling benefit and a safe area for children to play, as well as keep out you know, damaging problems in that area. So, you know, hopefully you can get all the balance. I don't know what the message will be at the end of the session for uh, the future audience, but. You know, there, it, there's a lot of moving parts going on in this business, and uh, I do thank you for the opportunity to be here today. You asked that. Go ahead, Tom. What, what was the percent of increase of demand of organic that you mentioned? Organic fertilizer. People ask for uh, organics. Uh, the cost of these products are not equal to what we can do with conventional fertilizers. If you look at what is learned in other uh, areas, about 5% of food products are being sourced organically. If I ran the numbers, we should have about 55,000 acres under turf management with organic. We're at about 3,000 acres. The demand is not that high, mainly because they think organic also gives them control of insects, weeds, diseases. And right now, we only have effective organic fertilizer. There's some pretty good biorational insecticides out there, but uh, the herbicide, bioherbicides, what's out there in the market are, are, are uh, acetic acid, vinegar-based things, or uh, fatty acid soaps that are really uh, non-selective. Yes, sir? You're cutting your percent of uh, treated area. Uh, I'm going to be showing how, right after lunch how important that is in model assumptions. But I'd like to ask you, if you should be taking your calculation one step further, <clears throat> when you talk about 32% of the areas, you know, that are lawns are treated, but you're, you're assuming that the front lawn and the back lawn will be treated, and in your experience, aren't there a lot of homeowners that in that 32% further only want the front lawn treated? I think you're getting larger. The question is about do consumers treat the front and the back are equally the same? From a, a professional application, only until uh, lots get probably over 15,000 square feet do we see that distinction between the front yard and back yard. I can tell you myself, where water is not restricted in Columbus, but it is, we're in a drought situation, I'm only trying to keep the water in my front yard and let my back yard go dormant. So there is some behavioral change between the front of the house and the back of the house. But a lot of it, I think, is going to be more of the size of the lot within a subdivision. Again, the Northeast, we have lot, lawn sizes. Uh, north of 8,000, whereas in my community, they're, they're about 5,000. So it, it's hard to decide that. Well done, Kurt. Okay. So Kurt, Kurt. Okay, our final speaker this